Welcome to the O'Connor Elder Law Channel. I'm your host, Melissa O'Connor. I'm a Florida-based elder law attorney who does estate planning, focusing on long-term care needs, commonly referred to as Medicaid planning, and I do probate, and I do it well. Today, I wanted to talk to you about the impacts of refusing to give up control. But before I do, I wanted to invite you to schedule a free strategy session with me at eldermeeting.com. Okay, I know I've talked about this um, concept before, but it's worth reiterating because it comes up frequently in my practice, and that is refusing to give up control. So Americans generally, we're known um, glo you know, worldwide, globally, as being very independent people, right? Um, we're a people group who like to take care of ourselves, um, we like to handle our own affairs. We like to dictate our own future. And um, that carries with us all throughout our life and into um, our golden years. So when we're faced with health crises or even just the um, realization that our bodies are no longer doing what we want them to do and they might be falling apart around us, um, we still will dig in our heels and not want to reach out to resources in our community, not want to rely on family or friends to take care of things for us because we still hold strong and fast to this ability, um, this concept that we have the ability to do it, right? Like we can take care of ourselves. In fact, we not only can take care of ourselves, we, we take care of others, um, that's our role. And um, the concept of letting go of some things and not being in control of everything in your life is very scary and something that most people will fight to the bitter end and refuse to do. But um, what I see in my practice with people who hold fast to this and don't um, eventually come to the realization that they need their community to help them at that stage in their life, what I see for the people who refuse to let go and who um, will demand to be in control of their affairs and to the bitter end, um, unfortunately, many times these people have now blocked their relatives and their community into a box where they are left with either leaving them at risk, right? Um, knowing that they were refusing help and now they are physically at risk, financially at risk of being exploited by others, um, just in a bad predicament or even a danger to others if they continue to insist on driving their vehicle when they no longer um, have the requisite vision to safely maneuver their vehicle. What they're doing is they're leaving their relatives in a pickle and um, forcing them to petition essentially for guardianship to have a court declare them unable to handle these certain affairs. And if they have no planning in place, then meaning they haven't named anybody to be their backup because they just couldn't even think of having somebody else make decisions for them. Now the court doesn't even know who they would have picked in this situation because they never informed anybody. So. Um, it could be the very relative that you dislike the most that petitions the court to obtain, you know, um, control over your affairs in essence, to have you deemed unable to handle certain affairs. And they might be appointed your guardian or um, at least be the, the, you know, the driving force to having um, changes made in your life that are essentially not um, against your will, right? For lack of a better term. However, if um, you would have put, if these people would have put planning in place and would have at least designated a healthcare surrogate, would have at least named somebody as their agent under a durable power of attorney, would have possibly have set up a trust which held their assets and had a successor trustee named, um, then it, these sorts of end games, right, will not be as severe because your relatives are able to gently. Um, step in and, and be of assistance to you 
do not require the um, intervention of courts and government. And even if it came to that, then the um, decision makers in government and in the court system would know who you wanted to be in charge of your affairs. So, fat, you know, long story short, um, refusing to give up control and refusing to acknowledge that you might need help in the future and therefore refusing to plan ultimately um, just creates a sad ending at the end. You know, very few people are able to um, just peacefully pass in their sleep and never had needed, you know, the assistance of anybody else. And while I hope that for all of us, um, the reality is, is that many of us will need assistance and putting in place planning will help your family and your community um, be able to assist you gently um, without the need for government intervention. So this is just my PSA about um, what it looks like when you refuse to give up control and things that you might want to consider when um, evaluating at least at minimum putting in place a plan that names the people that you truly trust and let them know that you don't want their help until you really, really need their help. Um, but at least name them. Um, hope this has been helpful to you. If it has, I ask that you like and share with others. And as always, you're welcome to schedule a free strategy session with me at eldermeeting.com.